<laughs> this game is so easy, I can't believe these guys. Ooh, headshot. Oh, headshot. The law has oh. entered the game. <laughs> oh, come on. It's only one guy. Guys, why, why are you logging out? Guys? Uh-oh. Hello everyone, I am Nurgle Probe and welcome to episode 9, Video Game High School. Alright, so Video Game High School is a worker placement dice rolling game designed by Isaac Vega and it's published by Plathack Games and it's for 2 to 4 players. Before moving on to actually explaining the game, I thought I would mention what Video Game High School actually is. It started off as a web series created by Rocket Jump, and uh, it's uh, this game was actually a part of their Season 3 Kickstarter, I believe. I don't know if it was one of the goals or if it was certain to happen if they just managed to reach the goal for that season, but that's how this came, game came to be, anyway. Uh, so Platat take took that mission. I don't know how they actually got connected or how that happened. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what this game come from. So Video Game High School takes place, or VJHS for short, takes place in a near future. And I think it's just a near future so that they can kind of explain how technology works in the future when it comes to gaming. Uh, in a school where kids learn to compete in video games. It's basically an eSport high school. Um, that, I believe that would that would be the name today if it existed. And I mean, there are high schools out there right now actually that teaches esports, so it's uh, not an impossible future. Uh, absolutely not. Maybe not to the sense that the series makes it to look. I mean, it's kind of crazy. It's just gaming, and I don't think any school would just be gaming completely. Not at. I don't even think that would be legal. Uh, but yeah, I guess it depends on what the game is, folks. But move on, moving on. The game is a, as I mentioned, a dice rolling a worker placement game. So the game works like this. You get a character, one of the characters from the show. Uh, with this character, you get three standees. Uh, these, these are basically your workers that can be put on the board in different kind of classrooms and areas in the school. Uh, you also get three unique power cards. These cards can be used once throughout the game, but you can also reset them by going to different rooms or different places in the school. I don't remember exactly which one resets the card, but there is a place where you can flip your card back up and you can use it again. Uh, the game... You also get five dice, which you will roll to get... Well, it's basically Yahtzee style. Uh, except you need only to collect as many of, of one number as possible. And the reason for this is to set high scores in different video games that are located in the school or next to the board. And the way you do this is by rolling these dice and collecting the different symbols on them. There are symbols for different kinds of game genres like FPS, strategy, racing, rhythm, and there's a wild one that can be anything. And on these games there is also a high score card below it. So for example if I roll four racing dice I can then set the high score to a new uh, to 4 million, each dice being 1 million points. Uh, so basically, you reveal the 4 million points below the game, and you set the high score icon on that to show that it has been beaten this turn. That way you also get 4 points for beating it to 4 million, and you move your point tracker 4 points. And this also means that for the next player that tries to beat that racing game, they need to get above 4 million points. So next turn they actually need to roll 5 dice and get all racing to be able to set the high score. And this might sound like, so you can only set the score to 5, right? Because there's only 5 dice. No, actually, on the board in front of you, that this <laughs> this is where the pl worker placement part comes in. You have 3 workers that you can place, or 3 standees of your character. You place these in different rooms, and on these rooms you can get skill tokens. And skill to tokens are used as die rolls, basically, or the die results, rather. So on your turn you can actually collect these tokens, and let's say you have seven tokens for real-time strategy, that means that you can actually set the high score on real-time strategy to seven. But to set these high scores, you also need to use your standees. So setting a high score wastes one of your other actions for that turn, but it gives you points, so you're actually being put in the lead. 
That is basically the game. You put your workers down on either a game to set a high score or a room to get skill points or do a certain ability within the game. It, it can be stealing skill points from another player and so on and so on. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that actually in the center of the board there's also a challenge card. I don't remember the name of it at this point. I'm gonna take a quick look here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, it's actually a challenge card uh, that you reveal in the center of the board. And these give you a few die results that you need to get, otherwise you will get a negative effect on you. So in the center it might be one racing, one RTS, and one or two RTS, for example. Then you need to roll that or have the skill tokens to beat that and place your worker there. If you, when you do this, you get the positive effect of that card, but if you don't do that, at the end of that turn, you will get the negative effect of that card, which can be losing ranking, which is victory points, or just losing one of your skills, or losing one of your uh, skill tokens, and so on and so on. Usually, you want to beat that card, or place one of your workers there to get that done, but it really depends on the negative effect and what your board looks like at that point. If you don't have any skill tokens, for example, you don't need to worry about lo losing skill tokens. Now, yeah, that's that's basically the game. Each character have a special ability that they can use, like if they set a high score, get one extra ranking. Uh, if you get the same rank as another player, move that player back three ranking, and so on and so on. There are a few different ones. And the special abilities are... I haven't played enough with the different characters to say that any character is broken, but a lot of people are saying that different characters are broken, so I'm guessing they are kind of balanced. Uh, and if they're not, you, you know, just don't play with that character that you think is broken. Um, at the beginning of your turn as well, of course, you roll a dice, the Yahtzee style, so you get to roll three times to collect dice, and the only negative thing here is that you can actually look at the other players, what they're rolling for, and kind of see if, they, if one player is just, you know, kept his FPS dice, and keeps rolling FPS things, then you can just be like, no, I'm not gonna keep that then, because he's going for that, so I'm gonna go for something else. Uh, but that's just, you know, that depends on the players that you're playing with. Usually when I play, we just focus on our own dice, we don't think about what the other people are doing, and I think that's really what you should be doing, because that makes it more fun. Uh, something else that happens, actually, if you don't set a high score on a certain game during a turn, that machine, it looks like an arcade machine, basically, gets a bonus point on it. So when you score it next time, you get that bonus point, which gives you one more ranking. The game is very simple. Very, very simple. It's a... If you love the show, you will love it even more, I think, because the characters are very thematic to what they are in the show, and the board is awesome for that purpose. And I love the art style, this kind of uh, cartoonish kind of style that they've added. Really like that. So, yeah, the game is simple, and I think... It's kind of sad, because I've heard a lot of not great things about this game. Uh, people say that they enjoy it, but they're not, you know, overly hyped about it. But I'm guessing it's like, kind of like Carcassonne, you know, everyone enjoys it, but they're not like, yeah, it's the best game ever. And it's kind of the same thing with this game. This game is really, really good. It's actually really, really fun. It's one of those games that you can pull out, play fast, finish up fast, have a good time, and then put it away. And, you know, it doesn't leave a big mark with you, but it's still fun during the time you play it. And I love dice rolling, so that's a positive thing. And the fact that it's mixing two very fun elements. I like worker placement and I like dice rolling. And they make it so simple that, yeah, it just feels good. It feels fun to play. And some, people's ha some people have complained about, you know, the balance of the characters. And I think it really depends on who you play with. If you're playing with a gamer gamer, then maybe, yes, they can see which character is, you know, the most capable of maximizing. But all characters actually have something that they're really good at and something that they can do better than someone else. Some wants to collect skill tokens and use skill tokens more than dice. Uh, some keeps, uh, one character keeps resetting the score so that he can score easily and so on and so on. Uh, it's a really Really, really fun game and you should definitely try it. This is one of the few games that I could say you should, if you haven't tried it and you want to, buy it. You won't hate it. I don't think you will hate it if you enjoy dice rolling games or worker placement games. It's one of those games that you can get it and you could, you will probably get a fun time out of it and a good game out of it. And you know, if it's not your thing, it's not that expensive of a game. It's basically the same price as Carcassonne, I believe. Carcassonne might be a little bit cheaper. Overall, it's a good quality game. Uh, a complaint is, though, that the rule book actually has some printing errors, uh, and when I say printing errors, it's not actually an error, it's just missing numbers. So at the game setup, the board setup has numbers on it, numbered 1, 2, whatever it is, 7, 8, but each step is not numbered on the text above, so you kind of need to find it yourself. Other than that, 
it's a cute little game, really fun to play, really fun to roll the dice. And yeah, it also have this kind of take that element when you use your abilities in certain spots on the board, which might not be for everyone, but I think it's friendly enough to be more annoying and fun than being resentful and I will kill you after the game because you just put me behind so much. And the points keeps rolling in. It's one of those games where points are easy to collect and it starts off basically very easy. Everyone can get those few first points on the high score um, or on the high scores on the different games. But as the game goes on, it gets harder because the points will go up so much. And then you just need to figure out who is fighting for what. What should I be fighting for? Should I fight someone else for different games? And that is also one of those things that can be kind of fun or annoying depending on who you are that another player just takes your high score as you plan to take it and you're like well now i have all these tokens and dice that i don't need to use for anything though you can always if you that happens you can always use your dice to switch them to skill tokens and so on and so on to have for the following turns you can also i believe switch skill tokens into other skill tokens. I'm not sure if there's a place for that on the board. I've never had a problem with that. There are also two different kind of skill tokens. I didn't mention that. There's one that is one use only. So it's basically you throw it back into the pool of tokens once you've used it. And you can also get permanent tokens, which stays in front of you throughout the whole game. So yeah, video game high school, the board game, a great little game, really fun. If you love the show, you will love the board game just because of, you know, all the artwork and things that are awesome. There's also a small explanation of all the characters in the rule book, which is kind of cute. Uh, and if you're not a video game high school fan, you, I think you will still enjoy the game if you enroll dice roll, enjoy dice rolling and worker placement. Though I believe that you need to be more of a fan of dice rolling than worker placement, because the worker placement is more like just a tiny part for the dice rolling, basically, or to uh, make that more thematic. But yeah, a great game by Isaac Vega. Definitely worth trying out, definitely worth playing. And uh, yeah, this is, as always, a follow-up on my Instagram sketch on the same game that you can find on my Instagram. Name there is obviously the same as here. It's Nurgle Probe. You can find it there. Uh, I will leave a link wherever you listen to this if it's down in the description or in the description somewhere on the site. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next week with another board game or top five list depending on what I feel like doing. Thanks for listening anyone. Uh, anyone. Everyone. I hope you have a great day and I will uh, talk to you soon. Take care.